out, everybody. I'd like to uh, welcome you to the first, uh, very first episode of our uh, Mahogany uh, podcast. Uh, I'm excited here today because we've got uh, my man uh, D. Hutch here, one of the uh, phenomenal artists in in the Midwest, uh, if not the United States. So I'm excited about uh, having D. Hutch here. Uh, my name is Scott Terry, and I am uh, uh, the owner of Mahogany Gallery. I'm also one of the artists as well. Um, so uh, welcome to our very first uh, podcast here uh, at, at the Mahogany Gallery. So I want to, first before we get started, just introduce everyone to uh, Mahogany Gallery. Uh, Mahogany Gallery is uh, located in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Uh, we are unique in the sense that uh, we really uh, showcase the works of uh, black American artists here uh, in the United States. So um, I, want, I want to welcome everyone to come down to Mahogany Gallery. Uh, for our current exhibition, which is the uh, Nguzo Saba Reaffirmation. Uh, we have 14 amazing artists from all over the uh, United States. So come on down. Our address is 1345 uh, 52nd Street. That's in uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin. So come on down. Hope to see you uh, sometime soon. So again, uh, welcome D. Hutch. So D, um, we're just going to just get started. Just get, get started just rapping about, you know, art. The podcast is about art culture um you know life okay. and um so i want you to let everyone know um first um let's talk about you know your journey so up to this point in your life you know let's talk about a little bit about um you know what moves you you know how how did you you know what how did d hutch get to where he is today um so growing up in racine wisconsin uh my father was an artist and back in the day my mother was an artist too so the arts was introduced to me early on i mean i was finger painting uh drawn on the walls of my grandma's house getting in trouble for it so <laughs> it only makes sense that graffiti and things like that would come into play later in life um but i was always in the art always into uh whether whatever it was comic books cartoons ads different things video game ads or you know any type of marketing things um it's always surrounded always just really intrigued by it um Went to Park High School, graduated, short time at uh, Parkside, but no real further uh, education. Formal training with yeah, the art. Yeah, yeah. Art or anything. Uh, was just always into it, man. I, I airbrushed early on back in the day when everybody had airbrushed t-shirts and mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, you know, I always had a his and hers shirt, <laughs> you know, things, Mr. <laughs> Mrs., things like that. Right, right. Um, and that transitioned into... Uh, using the skills that I learned in school, like from painting or drawing or illustrating, mixing that with airbrushing and outside of that, knowing about spray cans and aerosol art uh, into what I do today with mixed medias. So just taking all the things that I've been surrounded with and putting it into one. Right that's on. pretty much my style. So would you say, so really one of your foundations would be um, airbrushing? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, my father, uh, taught me the airbrush game. He airbrushed, I mean, yeah. since the late 80s, he was in the airbrushing and uh, he did everything from uh, t-shirts to shoes, hats, cars, backdrops, motorcycle helmets. So I seen Absolutely. a lot of different things growing up and that was really one of my first hustles, to be honest with you, was airbrushing shirts, you know, right. that's something that I could do while I was in school, right. but I didn't, you know, have a, a boss or anything you right. know, like that is, right. you know what I mean? I guess for really entrepreneurship, I didn't think about it that way, but it's like my first right. real, you know, me owning my business was doing that. Right. Right on. And just so, just give a little bit of background on, on D. Um, you know, his dad, uh, shout out to uh, Darren Hutchinson, the OG. Uh, he's been around for a long time, too. So, um, shout out to you, um, Darren. You know, we forget about you, brother. Um, you know, you're, you're a legend as well. So, um, absolutely. Yeah. So, I, I want you, uh, so airbrushing was um, one of your foundations. Right. Right. Um, so, let's talk about kind of moving forward about inspiration so like you know what creatively what do you feel inspires you so it comes from a wide range of things um i would say looking at 
my more recent work has been um, religion, the study of religion. I've always been into theology. So learning these things over time and being inspired by the stories, uh, naturally us being artists, you hear something that it, it just creates an image in your head. So me trying to put that into my art, whether it's uh, like the reflection painting with the man and the woman, and you know, we turn on the side, it's the infinity symbol. Um, the one say lie with the man praying or meditating, you know, all of these different, uh, I guess, interests outside of art come into play into it. Uh, religion, like I said, religion, science, uh, those are two really big ones. Right on, know? right on. You know, and I, and I really reflect on your work. You know, you can see yeah. that you know, in all your pieces. And I think that's one of the things that really, you know, captured me was that you have all these things. It really makes you, it makes you really look and when you're seeing the piece, just, you just grab it, it just, you hone in on the things that you connect with, you know? Yeah. And uh, that's one thing I really, I really love about your work, man. So we can see the inspirations, you know? We can see the spirituality in those pieces. We can for see, sure. uh, you know, all these things. So, and I can't um, take the, a lot of credit for it. A lot of that comes from family members, you know, putting that into me. Like, absolutely. My, my grandmother, Emma Hutcherson, um, she, she's a pastor, you know what I mean? So being in the church and her explaining things like comprehensively about the Bible, more than just reading it and taking that face level, like explaining things on a deeper level, I think that taught my mind how to look at things like that when I read them, you know, whether whatever religious uh, passage it was, you know, whether it's the Quran yeah, yeah. or the Bible or the Torah. Uh, so I, I would say, my grandmother is, is, is a big part of that too in my work and she always said keep the light in your work yeah. you know and the, the more I grew and uh, as time passed I, I have a better understanding of what the light is yeah. you know so that's something that I constantly incorporate in it where there's just little um, little things you might see splashes yeah. of uh, white highlights different things or different uh spirals and shapes that look like electricity you know right. what I mean flowing through people it's all right. about the flow you know right. in my work so when you say the light like the light is can be that's a subjective term too it doesn't have yeah. this should be just like a white spot you yeah. know it's just it's the light so when I look at your piece uh, uh, what's the name of that piece over there bro? reflection yeah so reflection you know you look at that you the the, the, the symbol of uh, infinity uh -huh. like that's that's also light you know yeah, what I mean absolutely and, and, man uh, and that's one of the things that you know, makes the work so great you know it's uh, everyone can that. take something different from you know all your pieces so um, you know again you know shameless plug here come down to Mahogany Gallery check out the uh, uh, D. Hutch's work that's on display here in our exhibition uh, you'll really be amazed for sure um, so kind of moving forward a little bit here D um, as an artist you know, family man, you know, you got children, you got business, se several businesses, yeah. uh, really a serial entrepreneur, as I like to say. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's talk about that life-work balance. You know, how, how do you, um, uh, do you have any guiding principles or any game you want to give to help uh, folks like you, you know, and myself and other artists out there who are trying to juggle, you know, family, life, work? visions, all those things. Absolutely. Um, so going through it, uh, I'm still, I mean, I'm 30 years old. I'm still learning, constantly learning uh, through everything as far as that juggle of the, the life work balance. Um, for me, like at this point, having uh, the, the retail store, Root City, where we sell all the racing themed merchandise and other pieces, um, tattooing, of course, which is a full time job on its own, drawing and, you know, researching things and, of course, doing it, the application of it, uh, and then still trying to do the, the, the fine art. Not trying to do, right. doing fine right. art right. and participating in the arts community. Of that. Yeah. Um, I would say if there's anything that I've learned more recently is that um, if you, oh, okay, I'll, I'll, you, I'll say, for example, of uh, tattooing. Uh, like right now, you know, in, in racing, it's a small town, racing Kenosha, Milwaukee area. Um, it's a small town down here, and as much as I would like to be, my focus to be sleeves and back pieces and things like that, these big pieces that I love to do, um, 
you know, you, you got to make ends meet. So it's a constant struggle of making sure that you got enough to provide for a family yeah. and things like that. Yeah. So sometimes you got to do stuff you don't want to do. But even that's a balance in itself because I, I used to get and so I very often get uh, caught up in uh, trying to do this, that, and the third and overloading my plate just to make sure I had funds to do everything. Um, and then I don't get to actually create work that I'm putting my myself into that, that speaks for me, you know? Right. So uh, one thing I learned at the time is like, don't put the focus on the money, man. Like if it's, if it's true, like what you're doing is, is for real, like the money is going to be there, you know? So always just, uh, one thing I constantly tell myself is just to focus on what you're doing. You might miss some things, you know, you might just have to pull from other places, rob Peter to pay Paul, you know, type situation. Um, but keep the focus on what your focus is, you know. And for me, that's uh, really expressing myself creatively, as, as creatively as I can with tattooing uh, and painting and, of course, like the clothes and stuff like that. Yeah, um, yeah, right on, right on. Those, those, are, those, are, real, those are real words of wisdom, man, for my, my I like to call it, young OG over yeah. here, man. You know, <laughs> you got, you, you like, you know, you're, you're a young man, wise above his years, you know what I mean? So I want to give you a shout out for that, man. Like, seriously, um, that's, that's some real dope advice. Um, just, just, you know, recognizing that game. Um, and I think that's really important, man. You know, you talked a little bit about, you know, the passion. Like, when yeah. you're pursuing your passion, things happen, you Absolutely. know? Like, th good things happen, you know? And that's, uh, I'm a firm believer in that, so it's good to hear you uh, really speak on that. Um, you know, kind of moving forward here, uh, you know, we all got challenges, right? I mean, yeah. things that, maybe some obstacles or, you know, creatively or artistically. So, you know, for example, like me, for instance, watercolor. Like, I can't water, I'm not gonna watercolor for, for a life. I can't do watercolor. Me neither, man. Yeah. I don't but want I, nothing to do with it. <laughs> you know, but I know some phenomenal uh, watercolor artists. Yes. Uh, shout out to my man, Don Riccio. Don Riccio is just a uh, phenomenal artist, but, uh, also just a phenomenal uh, um, uh, watercolor artist. Every time I see his work, I'm um, also Matupe Johnson. Um, shout out to you too, brother. Um, so getting back to my uh, original question, what do you feel for you artistically or creatively is a, is a challenge or something that you kind of struggle with um, creatively or artistically? I think a, a constant um, battle between me, and I've heard it from other artists too, is you're constantly trying to uh, express yourself in the best way. And like I said before, my style is mixed media because I never fully learn one way, like 100%. Like, I use acrylic paint, yeah, but I'm not uh, a really well-versed person in acrylic. Yeah, Different right. styles and yeah, techniques yeah, and sure, things like sure. that. Everything is self-taught. So sometimes I'll see people who do, like, just specifically uh, acrylic work, and I'll say, Man, I wish I could just paint like that. It's so smooth with everything they do. It's quick. It's methodical. You know, with yeah, me, yeah. it's more or less just, you know, just kind of figuring out a puzzle. I don't even know all the pieces yet. Just putting it, this thing together until uh, it doesn't suck anymore. Yeah. <laughs> for, for the most part. Um, but I love seeing artists who are like really well versed in one thing. Like you said, watercolor. Like I. I've tried it before and I don't gave up many times yeah. a watercolor. I, I didn't grasp it early on, um, but I do love seeing it, you know, right. so I, right. I respect it a lot, you know. Um, I don't know, maybe later in life, who knows, maybe I'll get into it. But uh, as far as challenges, um, a, a consistent thing is just focusing on doing me and having growing a, a better understanding of what me is in my artwork and versus me trying to um, make these things that sell, you know, or make more things that um, I feel like people want to see yeah, or see right. more of, right. uh, especially going to different galleries and shows like right. that. Like all of the time right. I see something, I'm like, wow, that's dope. Or I see murals and I'm like, man, that's, you know, but um, it's just not me, you right. know? And uh, so, yeah, I would say that would be one of the challenges, just keeping the uh, consistent focus on what you it, or what I am, you know, as an artist and staying true to that. Yeah, you know, absolutely. So being true to yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, because, you know, I, I think one of the things that sometimes artists get caught up in is riding that wave, right? Yeah. You know, what, what's popular, what's hot. Absolutely. You know, and that's anytime, like, you know, for instance, uh, you know, like now, you know, black art, black mm -hmm. artists, you know, they're hot, you know, nationally. Yeah. And, you know, they're hot 
drop because um, the mainstream has finally said, oh, okay, yeah, black artists, we want you guys and ladies in the in the in the, in the mainstream. You know, you want us, we want you, you know, in our in our galleries. We want you in the you know in the archives and all that. And, yeah. and the reality is, you know, um, when the mainstream. They just ride waves, you know what I mean? Whereas, and ultimately, what it boils down to is you have your tried and true uh, venues and artists, you know, like Mahogany Girl, and so many other uh, black-owned uh, galleries and art- artistic spaces out there in the United States. Uh, like, we're still going to be here, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. Black mm-hmm. artists are still going to be here. So it's not about riding those waves. It's about, you know, being true to who we are um, as artists. So, but like you said, yeah, you know, you got you got bills to pay, too. You know yeah. what I mean? So sometimes yeah, yeah. you got to do things that you might not necessarily, you know, uh, enjoy doing. But you know, hey, you got you got supplies to buy. You got, For sure. <laughs> you know, you got things to do. So yeah. um, it is what it is. Sometimes I want to talk about a little bit too. Uh, you know, I saw you the other day. Uh, you went to one of our local elementary schools, and um, that was dope. By the way, I was I was I was really happy to see that. Appreciate that. Um, so. That kind of leads into um, paying it forward. Yeah. Um, so talk about uh, paying it forward and what are some of the ways that you do that or would like to do more of in the future. Yeah, that was a that was a big one. Um, I love doing anything in the community, man. Like uh, something I always say is like whether it's the uh, the stuff I do with art or clothes or whatever it is, show different shows that we do is like doing things I would have made like 12 year old me happy or like yeah, young right. me, you know. <laughs> so like talking to the kids yesterday, um, I think they were pretty much the age group of like third to fifth grade maybe. Um, they were kids, kids, you know what I mean? They understood tattooing and things like that, TV shows. Um, but I just think back like, man, how dope would that have been when I was young to see somebody that, that looked like me, you know, doing things that yeah. I was interested in, you yeah. know, and being able to explain things and, you know, relate to them, you know, stuff like that. Um, so that's, like I said, just like you said, it's me doing my part um, for, you know, like I said, I, I, like I said, I, when I was younger, it was like a mystery seeing anybody who uh, had ever made their own clothes or or seeing somebody who would ever um, did packages for marketing for things like that. These are all things that I I loved when I was a I was a shorty, but just didn't have that that bridge to get to it. So just trying to build that bridge uh, for the youngsters because I want. Racine, as Racine is already doing, to just grow and constantly turn into a more artistic place, a more yeah. uh, you know creative place, diverse place, not just in like race, but ideas and right. things, like products and things that are getting created from right. too. So if the kids can see that and see somebody that's doing shirts, that's making things, uh, creating products, uh, making classes like uh, my boy TJ Zagar, shout out to TJ. We used to do a class at. Um, the Martin Luther King Center on the north side. And we called it Keys Open Doors. And it was literally like us just figuring out as we went along, just we would buy our own products, supplies and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Come up with like a class curriculum, you know, yeah. if you want to call it that, yeah, but yeah. we're just trying, you know. <laughs> and a couple of kids came by, I think we did like four or five of them, you know. Um, trying to understand how to reach the kids, give them to calm down and be quiet yeah, and chill yeah, out, you yeah, know. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> you're coming straight from the basketball, you know, from hooping to coming in there, they got high energy. Right. But um, with, with that, like I said, just um, just utilizing the, the people around you, uh, the, the options that you have, and us creating more options for the youth, you know what I mean, that's coming up now. Right is, on. Uh, my idea of paying it for. Right on. Yeah. So do you feel like uh, us as... You know, older artists, we have responsibility to our younger artists and younger folks in the community. A a big responsibility, man. Um, I feel that anybody, I mean, not even artists really, like if you got something that you can give or offer or some, you know, just piece of wisdom or something that you can tell or even just right now with social media, like just sharing something, you know what I mean, could help that 
get to somewhere else that somebody might not have seen right, it before. Right. You know, so I feel like just us and Racine is, is my focus. You know, us in general, everybody can do something. You know what I mean? From the smallest thing to whatever, you know, your reach is. Right on, right on. So, uh, D, so oftentimes, you know, when we talk about, you know, as artists, you know, we just have these creative block sometimes, right? Yeah. You know, we, we got all these things floating in our heads, right? And we, you know, we, we start doing it. Like, I got this vision and then we we get the canvas or our sketchbook and we start kind of illustrating that vision or, you know, fleshing it out and then it's like, man, you know, it doesn't look like how I envisioned it, right? Yeah. So, um, it, then we kind of take a pause. So, those are those creative blocks. So, what what do you typically do to remedy those typically blocks, uh, those, uh, those creative blocks? What do you typically do? Um, um, fix that how do you overcome that it's so another thing i'm constantly learning constantly reinventing myself things like that uh one thing that i've actually just recently put together is uh being in motion something about being in motion helps my mind i guess get in motion um my kids i got two kids born a girl they go to school in milwaukee so i'm constantly on the highway because i'm taking them to and from multiple times during the week. So being on that highway, you know, usually they knock out, they fall asleep. Right. So I put on a podcast or an old interview about an artist that I like or something like that. And listening to them talking gets my mind working. And then so I think just, just traveling, I don't know if it's being in a car or it might even work on a train or something too, but something about motion has worked for me really well really, uh, recently when I'm trying to figure out that puzzle like I was talking about. Um, as far as with paintings, you had mentioned like you start something and then you get tired of looking at yeah, it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Man, I got stuff. It might sit for three months. It might sit for two years. You know what I mean? You jump back into it. I already know. Uh, like I said, it's, it's all a puzzle, but I feel like uh, having a solid understanding of what your foundation is and where your creativity comes from and where your inspiration comes from and just constantly circling around that, something is going to spark again that you, you might see something in that painting that you didn't see before it might need to take a different direction you know I don't paint it over a whole bunch of stuff I don't right, have right. you know, <laughs> that's just a part of it sometimes but um, yeah stuff like that for me being in motion uh, staying focused on what inspired me to start that piece in the first place or any piece in the first place which for me like I said is always like science learn new things i'm constantly listening to podcasts right. people talk neurologists and astrophysicists and things like that uh comedy even sometimes even just laughing you know you might hear something that it, it might connect in a whole nother place you didn't even think it was right. going to connect to you know right so i i love just absorbing as uh, as much as i can right you know? that's what's up uh, you know, uh, I was going to speak to that a little bit too. Like, you know, for me, I, I can definitely relate to, you know, uh, you get started and then you, you're not feeling it. So like you step away and you just wash it all over and then you just, you know, you start building from that. Um, but one thing I realized, like for me, what helped me was, uh, what helps me is, is reading. Like, uh, yeah. you know, I, I discovered that, you know, and, and reading like something that's totally not related to either what I'm doing at the time yeah. or the focus of my like the vision of my of my piece um, because like reading it, it takes you away like you know at least for me I love you know I'm not like a nonfiction guy you know uh -huh. I like uh, I like history I like uh, you know biographies you know stuff like that you know but it's really it's really interesting to see like how other people solve problems yeah right? you know how do they what their view of the world was or was or what their view of that particular situation that they were dealing with absolutely um, you know how they how they saw problems and how they how they you know came to the thought process so um, that that that's one thing I really discovered for me to help me get through my uh, creative blocks you know I, and, I agree and, with and, you and some of that too was just like like I said just washing over that you know and just hey, starting over yeah and, it, and it's all good um so moving forward, um, so how do you feel like, you know, overall, man, like, you know, we talk about, you know, your inspiration, we talked about your, you know, creative process, you know, how do you feel, you know, how, how has art shaped you as a person? I think um, overall, as far as... It's funny that we had this conversation before we started the podcast, just on what you, the, the second calling. Right, uh, right. Like, 
for me, my first calling I thought was was teaching, education. So when I was in school, I, I just thought all I was gonna be, a, you know, a teacher. You know, go to school, get my, you know, whatever you need to do, and right. teach kids. Whether it was art or mm-hmm. history is my other big thing. Mm-hmm. That I, I like. Um, after I had my, my first kid, my daughter, school wasn't in the question no more. And then my son came not too long after that. I was like, I definitely can't go back. So um, that transitioned into me just being in the workforce, you know, working in the factory was then transitioning to me tattooing, making that jump, you know what I mean? Not knowing if it was gonna work out or not. Um, tattooing, that opened up doors for me to create, paint, and do all the things I do now. Just keep my nose to the grindstone. Um, but as far as it, how art helped define me. Um, I think that like we talked about the, the second calling, that like you might go one way and before you know it, that might fall off the money, you have to go a different way. You might, opportunity might come up. Um, the RZA, big inspiration, Wu-Tang Clan, they yeah, right six acts yeah, right on, shout Just out. Knowledge, wisdom, wisdom, understanding. So you might go one way thinking that's the way, you make a mistake, fall back, you know what I mean? That's the, the wisdom, understanding is you finding another way, another path, you know? And for art, it was like all of these things that I understood in life about myself that I might have doubted, <clears throat> you know what I mean? As far as, like it's a real therapeutic thing, creating something, like seeing something into a, a finished thing, you know yeah, what I mean? Right. Um, whether it's, you know, you can start your day and, I don't know, make your bed. Like that's you finishing a task, you know what I mean? That's you right, put your mind to. Right, and right. A painting is the same way. Uh, a tattoo has the same thing, you know, so it, it makes you feel accomplished finishing things like that. So uh, as far as defining me, um, feeling I got, like I can put my mind to something and accomplish it, you know, which, which turns into confidence that you can think of things and then see them to completion, you know. Um, character, you know, when we talked about, you know, you might turn away some things just because it don't go along with, you know, what, what your motive is, you know, whether it's, like I, I mentioned tattooing, but um, whatever it is, not maybe not selling out, you know, if you feel like this, this might be something that challenges your integrity, you know, that adds to character and that's through art. You know yeah, I mean? absolutely. I've been in those situations a lot of times. <clears throat> um, yeah, that, that, that would be some big thing. Like I said, character, um, confidence with being able to finish the task, see it through, uh, right on. things like right that. On. Yeah. Because, you know, we talk about, you know, uh, so the original question was, uh, how has art shaped you? And oh, that's what it was. I yeah, I'm gonna, no, but you, no, you, you hit on all those, you hit on those points, man. So, uh, you know, you are good. There. What I was going to say, uh, get at is, um, you know, oftentimes, like, you know, life is a journey, right? You know, we still, you know, we still walk in that path. You know, even as you get older, you know, you still, <clears throat> new people come in your life, new experiences, you get exposed to different things. Mm-hmm. You know, you have a, uh, you know, a wider view of the world and your situation and your life and, you know, people around you. You know, so oftentimes, you know, we take all these outside influences and they help guide our our vision, you know, into yeah. our work. But yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that, man. I think that's, uh, I think that's pretty dope. So if you, this is a question I love asking everybody. Um, if you could have a conversation with anyone in the world, living or uh, or dead, who would that be? Anybody. Hmm. That's a real good question. <laughs> <laughs> That's something that I... I like, it's a question I love asking everybody I come across because it's, the responses are always insightful, you know, introspective. Yeah. Uh, I tell you what, I, we can come back to that if you want to. We can come back to that. Let you marinate on that, marinate on that for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll come back to that. We'll, we'll come back to that. So, uh, success. All right. What is what is success to you? What does that look like? What is what is success to D Hutch? Um, so success for me. Oh, you know what? I got it. I got the answer for that. Oh, for the original? Yeah, okay, yeah. let me go back. We're going to, just to let the audience know out there, okay, we're going to go back to the original question um, that I let D. Hodge marinate on, and that is if you could have a conversation with anyone in the world, living or or dead, who would that conversation be with? So, uh, 
over time, I feel like this this consistently changes. So if I already be asked this question a week from now, it might be different even from sure. you know today. Uh, if I could meet somebody right now, like where my mind is at, uh, I would say it would be uh, I'll say Jay Z for right now. Sean Carter. Uh, if you would ask me last week. It would have been Malcolm X because okay. that's where my focus was. Um, so why Jay Z? So Jay Z right now, where I'm at, where my mind is at, in the the puzzles that I'm working on right now, is I'm focusing on things that are five and ten years away from me right now. But I don't see all of the the bridges to get to these points. I just yeah, know yeah. that these are the points that I'm I'm going to get to. You know. Um, and figuring out that plan right now. I've always been a big fan of him. I was bumping his music on the way here. Over here. <laughs> He's always been like this uh, this constant constant inspiration uh, in my life with just, you know, how we explain things, you know, seeing where he comes from and where he took it to uh, and just seeing how uh, homie's mind works. I think I would just uh, really enjoy asking him a lot of questions and getting uh, feedback from him, you know. Uh, so that, that would be the person for right now. Next Saturday, who knows? Might be somebody else. Yeah. All right, right on. That's always uh, that's one of my favorite questions I ask my guests, you know, because uh, everybody's different, you know, and it's, and it's beautiful to hear their responses because, you know, it's not right, you're not wrong. It is, it is, it is what it is. And, you know, you want to connect with who you want to connect with. So I'm going to do... Uh, um, another another question I want to ask you before we, before we get into our next little piece here, mm-hmm. and then we're going to end up wrapping this up. Um, so if you had a um, superpower, right? Uh, uh, any superpower you could have, you would want to have. What would that be, and how would you use it? Uh, this this is funny because I just talked to uh, a buddy of mine uh, the other day about this. He works with uh, kids with special needs, okay. right? And we were talking about um, that things like anxiety was transitioning to us talking about mental health and sure. uh, somebody you know uh, close to him that suffers from bipolar disorder. Um, and just different things with the mind and how intricate the mind is and how delicate the mind is. And I was uh, we kind of came to this conclusion like man some stuff it might look it might be looked at as like a like a, a hindrance or a disability is actually like their superpower like somebody with autism how their brain works you, you know you might see somebody that might not be able to communicate how they want to or how we you know communicate with people they might have a, a struggle with that but they can recall something that would take me forever to, to memorize right. you know, whatever right. it is or be a genius in a different way and like that's that's not a disability that to me that's like a superpower within its own you know what I mean um, that's just something that's, that's sparked in my mind when you said superpower because I was talking about the other day uh, but as, as far as a superpower that I, I would like to have um I immediately think of like X Men things like that. I'm a, I'm a big Marvel fan, so right on, on, a, on a, a realistic level. Right now, if if I had a superpower, it would be to whatever information that I retain that I never forget. Never forget. That would be very beneficial that to me would, right now. Yeah, they that said, would be they dope. Yeah. Said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I could just everything that I learn, that I read, I take so much in. Uh, I'm constantly, like I said, absorbing, listening to podcasts, reading books, having conversations with people. You know, what I mean, I, I generally like that more than even reading. Right you know, on. Could, I learn more from somebody that's been through it. You know, more than you know, than I got to go through it. Right on. Um, but if I could just keep all of the things uh, in, in the front of my mind and it just be there to use in business or life or talking to my kids, you know, whatever it is, I think that would be a superpower I would, I would keep. Yeah, sure. right on. That's pretty dope, man. That's dope. Yeah, I love it. Um, all right. Real quick, D, uh, and then we're gonna wrap this up, man, because it's because it's uh, it's already been almost thirty five minutes, wasn't that something? Yeah, I thought it was like twelve yeah. minutes. Yeah, that's, it ain't crazy. <laughs> that's what's up. Uh, so here's the deal. All right, word association. All right. Um, so what comes to mind when you think of these words? Okay. Right, I'm gonna throw some random words out there to you, and uh, you know, let's let the audience know what uh, what comes to mind. So when I say the word God, what does that mean to you? What do you think of? Um, a woman. Woman. Blackness. 
truth. Art. It's expression. The state of hip hop or rap. The current state? The current state, yes. Underground. And then one more for you. Racing. Home. <laughs> yeah. That's what's up. Really simple, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's my word association. You know, I'm looking at you like I, I, I see things like turning your head about that about that word, and then yep. you know, the home pops out. That's to talk about the roots, and we talk about that all the time, right? Yeah, the man. Roots because it's in your artwork. You know, it's in a lot of my work as well, and you know, we always end up coming back to our roots. Absolutely. You know, especially when you're coming through, going through into those challenges in life, you know, you end up going back to your roots and that's that's home. Sure. So so D Hutch, we're gonna wrap this up, but before we get out of here, I want you to um how can people find you? Talk about a little bit how you know the store, you know, let people know how they how they how they can get at you and find your work and uh the other things you got going on. Okay. Um so I'm on Facebook and Instagram. I took my website down. I wanna change some things about it, but Facebook is just D Hutch D E Hutch H U T C H on Instagram. My tattoo page is D underscore Hutch, and my page that specifically art will be Art by D Hutch um, on Instagram. Uh, as far as the store, uh, like I said, Root City is the name of it. We're downtown on Main Street, um, right between right on Fourth and Main. Uh, it's a plethora of things in there. We're connected with Focus 21 Studio, so it's a photography studio in the back, uh, black-owned studio, and up front is the retail store. So it's me and my partner Willie Reynoso, who uh, you know we create the shirts. He's a, a screen printer, so we collaborate with each other with all of the ideas and things that we do. Uh, our other homie uh, Luke X Weeks. Uh, also known by Luke Cabana, he got his brand Palm Tree Island, um, and he sells his his gear. So we are constantly doing drops, and he do a pop up. It's actually one tonight. Um, I don't know when this is air, but tonight, if you're around, you know, stop by Root City for uh, the Palm Tree Island pop up, and my other boy uh, Mike Burnett, who. No, my Mikey Fast Life, he's a DJ, but he also uh, is a really creative dude and curates these vintage uh, clothes and memorabilia and things like that. So his brand is called Only the Ill, and we see that section, it's like walking through like a 90s and 80s time capsule. We see all these different pieces and things uh, that's like cool. that. So that's the store, stop by if you can, you know, pick some up for you or the fam. And yeah, that's me. A shout out again to D Hutch. Um, go check him out. Uh, come down to the gallery to see some of his work. Go to uh, uh, check him out online and all the social media outlets uh, that he just mentioned. And D, man, much love. Pleasure to have you on, on the podcast, brother. Always love. Appreciate uh, you, man. Thanks for having me. All right. Shout out to y'all. Peace. Peace.